on my agenda is clearing out this pond weed because it's really getting a bit overgrown in there now and I need to do that carefully but I think most of what's going to leave the pond has done so but I'll just take it out and put it on the side of the pond I think to make sure there's nothing that can't crawl back into the pond if it needs to so that one's on my list somewhere I've got a bit of grass encroachment as well so I'll probably take care of that Well, today I'm harvesting some stew. Yep, you heard me. Stew from the allotment. I'll show you. Right, first is some of these swede that I've been growing. And there's a really nice big one here. Wow, look at that beauty. First ingredient down, quite a few to go. Next up, and from the same bed, are some turnips. So we've got in here. Look at good, purple turnips. We'll have three of these fellas. Oh, got a white one as well. All right, now one or two of these have got slug damage. So I think what I'm gonna do is take four and work out the best ones. That's a beauty. You definitely can't have stew without a carrot. So, let's see what we've got. It's a bit of a stumpy fella, but make a good meal. Let's see what else we've got. And there's another multi-legged carrot. They do like to split, but again, make a good meal. The other thing we need is some shallots, of which we've got plenty here drying nicely. We have three of those, and a nice big onion. Maybe two. And one other allium to add to the stew is, of course, the leek. So we've got shallots, onions, and leeks. I think one will do. Now it is without doubt too early to get your parsnips up because parsnips always taste sweeter if they've had a frost. But in the interest of a complete stew, I'm going to just lift one and see what we've got this year. So it's quite an exciting reveal. Let's see. That's looking pretty good. And the final ingredient is, of course, potatoes. Well, that's a nice bucket of really nice Charlotte potatoes. And we'll drop those in there. And there you have it. Stew from the allotment. Well, I had a lot of suggestions on how to overcome some of the cooch grass or bindweed that's in this compost. And one of the ideas was to put grass clippings on the bottom and allow it to become anaerobic, i.e. really wet. And then that some people have had some success with. So it sounded like a reasonable idea. And What's the worst that can happen? 
I just get a bit more compost. So I like that idea. And the grass is needing a cut. I need to wait for a, a dry day. But I'm thinking that I might just put the next load of grass clippings on the bottom of this and then give that anaerobic approach a bit of a go. So I've got to crack into this a bit at a time and I'll get there. So I'll get on. Well, there's been a lot of rain since that stew pack was harvested and the ground's pretty wet underfoot. I thought today we'd have just a little look around and show you what the plot's looking like at this time of year. It's definitely a different phase that I'm going into. So my cabbages are, well, on their way out really. We've got five there that are gonna become chicken food because I've just not really cared for them sufficiently. And you need to have a good clean up in here. Um, ready to put the compost on top. But as you can see, they got really mauled. Except that is for this fielder kraut, which has just remained absolutely fantastic. And I don't know whether the leaves are a bit too tough for the slugs or what, but you can see this cabbage right next to it, which is really struggling. And this one hasn't been touched. So that's another big plus for fielder kraut, although they clearly do get very big. But that one's staying in, we're gonna be eating that one. This bed, I'll just weed very quickly before I put compost on top of it. And there's just a couple of weeds in there. I'm gonna have some beetroot out today. In fact, let's take a look at it now. Now, beetroot does last quite well into the colder months, but there is a limit. So we're gonna have a couple of these out today and roast them. Just see what we've got, here we go. Yeah, so they're really still quite nice. And they'll make a nice meal. I think I'm gonna take three of those. There we go. So three beetroot for the pot. And this bed, it's got a bit of grass in it and a bit of weeding to do. And then that can be covered over with new compost. I recently did the celeriac and that's been weeded. And everyone said that they think the celeriac is a reasonable size, and it is a reasonable size. This one in particular is looking good, but I do want to grow big celeriac, and I will get there. It's just time and method. So this is a celeriac bed, and these really are way too small. I think I put these in a little bit later, and it's just not happening, but I will leave them in and probably with this bed, quick weed. And then over here, I'll do some compost over the top, probably a thicker layer so that when those come out, I can just sweep it across. My Swede bed is good, really. The Swede, we tasted it this weekend and it's fabulous. And I'll probably just clear the weeds and get rid of some of the old dead leaf. And we've got some turnip there as well. This is case that you wanted a turnip with those beetroot. So let's have this one out because that is one turnip. Fantastic. And he can go over there with the others. The bed that had the globo onions in, well, it's got a big dock leaf in it that needs to come out and then I can cover that over. And this is where I had the other onions and that's looking fine. So we'll just get that one covered. And over here, this bed looks as though it's gonna hold up. Got some weed growth and I need to get rid of that bramble. And then that one could be covered up. This one's pretty much ready, although I do wanna repair the edge. And that's a bit of a winter job. But in the interest of making sure that the compost is nicely settled, I will put compost over there in good time. And this is the bed that I'm putting off constantly because it's completely full of cooch grass. 
and I will get in there but I think it's going to be a day when it needs to be a little bit drier than it is today and my sprouts they're not going to come to anything I'm convinced and that couch grass is already encroaching back into here it's a really difficult challenge this one I'm convinced I'm going to end up putting a membrane over this and growing out of the membrane just to keep control of this sort of grass maybe with that one too so maybe with these beds I'll end up taking away everything that's in them and putting some compost down and then putting a membrane over the top and perhaps try a year growing through membrane trying to keep on top of that incessant weed growth well my kale is fantastic it's funny because I had a really good kale season about three years ago and this looks like another one it does help that they're held up with these poles so I'm going to continue to use those in fact there's one or two here that might need reattaching but you can see the amount of growth on these now is fantastic and this will certainly feed us all through the year and we've got these to look forward to the parsnip I tasted the other day which came out of that hole hadn't got the benefit of the sweetness that it gets with a frost because there's not been a frost yet but it was very tasty and these look really good so I'm really hopeful that they will serve us well through the coming months. You can see the red currants now. The leaves are turning yellow and falling and won't be long before I can see right through there to the compost bins. Now my runner bean bed, I'm going to keep these structures up and just lay my compost over the top just a little bit more weeding. I did quite a bit of weeding in here, but you can see the things that have survived. They need to come out, including a bit of cooch grass encroaching there. So I'll get all those out before I cover. That's just a minute's job. And my leeks continue to serve us well. It's probably one of the best leek seasons I've had for a long time. They really are very good indeed. There are a few that have bolted, but that's to be expected this time of year. Well, the experimental garlic bed is underway and as I showed you in my last video we've got some sprouting up nicely I can pretty much see every place I put one apart from here I've got a shoot coming up so fingers crossed on this bed it'd be really interesting to see if my chopped up onion tops have caused that white rot to come to fruition and then disappear that's the hope and purple sprouting broccoli looking good staking up has made a big big difference the plants are looking healthy and I'm really hoping for a fine crop of purple sprouting broccoli to eat early next year well the pumpkin patch is bare and the next big job in here is just taking these membranes over laying more compost in the middle and then covering back up and then it'll sit tight for the winter and hopefully we'll be ready for another go at pumpkins and squash next year it's been a great season this year here you can see some of the rain that we've been experiencing still pooled there in the corner and lots of you commented on my Jerusalem artichoke and they're certainly looking like they're going to be needing to be harvested fairly soon and one of you said that wait until the flowers are gone and they're nearly gone so it won't be too long before we're tasting those well the flower bed still hanging on in places these penstemons looking beautiful in this morning sunshine that we're getting which is a bit unusual and we've got some calendula still growing in here. Got an unusual insect in there. I've not seen him before. Oh, it looks like a bee that's just coming to the end of his days. That's a shame. But that's the time of year. And there's lots of calendula to come out. And that'll be a job for a bit of a drier day. Still got some of the white dahlias. 
and the fuchsia is looking absolutely fantastic and we've got quite a lot of new growth on some of these plants that we've chopped back and I'm gonna have to get control in here as well I think because this oregano probably needs to be cut right back now so that the new can come through and you can see a real mound of new leaves there well my gooseberries have bounced back after their sawfly attack this year and I'll need to just keep control of the shape of these but I'm definitely going to cover them next year and a number of you have said be careful what you choose to cover them with because some of the netting is not particularly good when it comes to birds and I think what I'm going to do is use a mesh over this to save that being a problem if I could get a mesh to go over both that would be ideal but we'll see what I've got and we'll see what's available the apple trees are dropping their leaves now as are the white currants and red currants although I have been amazed to see how early the buds are coming on some of these red currants and that's incredible but hopefully they'll survive through the winter and leaf up nicely in the spring and I've got four beds here that are pretty much sorted as you know I've got garlic under the apple tree and garlic in this one and these two have just weeded and made sure they're ready for next year and you were kind enough to tell me that these sweet williams are in fact biennials and a bit like wallflowers some of them do seem to go on and on so they look quite healthy plants hopefully we'll have a nice show of sweet williams next year some of the rhubarb is hanging on and I'll be getting those slimy leaves off pretty soon. Looks like we've got a self-seeded sweet william down there, which is quite interesting. And the other rhubarbs I cleaned up and cleared and they're just going to go into their dormant stage now. I'm looking over the mountain behind us and I can see quite a significant band of rain coming in. So I don't think it'll be long before it hits us. Well, there's plenty more to do on the plot, but I'm gonna be dodging the showers, I think, over the next few days. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed today's video. And if you did, click the like button and subscribe. And if you'd like to see my uploads every Wednesday and Sunday at 8 p.m., click on the bell and you'll be notified. Well, I hope you have a good week. And I'll see you soon. Be off and